good morning and good afternoon and good evening, everyone. It's Gerard O'Donovan here from sunny Weymouth in the south of England. We have a magnificent speaker for you today on the Foresight Lectures. Before I introduce this incredible man, Andre, for those of you who have not come across the Alpha Group, let me give you a very brief two minute overview. The Alpha Group, which has now been established for nine years and is currently in 31 countries around the world, is commonly called a peer-to-peer -peer executive board. So in many, many cities, we have an individual called a regional director who runs our alpha groups. Alpha groups are very exclusive membership groups. We only work with business owners anything up to about $100 million in revenue. So from almost nothing up to 100 million, but only the owner. We meet once a calendar month around the boardroom and we help those men and women to build, grow, develop, expand and create even bigger businesses. We make one promise and one promise only to our members. And that is that we will double the value of their business in two to three years. And so far, ladies and gentlemen, we have never failed. We are, I mentioned exclusive, what do I mean? In any alpha group, no matter how big the city, Istanbul, for example, over 40 to 50,000 businesses in Istanbul, no matter how big, we never ever allow more than 20 members to join any one alpha group. So very exclusive. But more than that, we never allow two people in the same industry. So only one engineering company, one accountants, one retail and so on. So the Alpha Group, we live for one reason only, to help, to empower and to invigorate the owners of SME businesses around the world in order to create a, a shift and a paradigm shift and in order to help create income for businesses and therefore employees, and more importantly, communities to help to grow. So there we are, that is the Alpha Group. Today, we have a magnificent speaker. This gentleman, Andre, if you check out his LinkedIn profile, he lives in that sunny tropical paradise known as Johannesburg in South Africa. And he is an expert on his history in helping sales, teams, companies, sales forces to build, to grow, to expand. He has come up with some incredible methods and techniques. And today he's going to be talking about a wonderful subject called the 90 day burn. And I will hand over Andre, can you hear me? Yeah, got you. Over to you, my friend. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction there. Um, I'm really looking forward to our time together today. And I just wanted to put this up on the screen here that I believe you should be seeing any second now. Yeah, I think you can see this, my screen now as well. We can indeed. Okay, so thank you very much for that. Uh, looking forward to our time together today. And today is all about elevation. It's about elevation from getting you to one level, basically where you are at now, to a level where you want to be. Sometimes it's where you've got to be because if you work for somebody else, they tell you what to do and when to do it. And, and these is, this is going to help for you as well. In many cases for entrepreneurs, uh, I believe that the tools and, and the, the thought processes that we're going to put in here today are definitely going to assist you in that as well. Because someone who has their own business, there's no one else driving you and you can sometimes decide not to do it. Whereas in a corporation, they might go, well, you will do it and you will do it by Friday. And you and maybe on your side do not have to necessarily do it on Friday. So, like I said, I believe we'll ha we'll have the tools and the thought processes by the end of this to facilitate you in this. So, let's get started with the 90-day burn. Then, I am your constant companion. I am your greatest helper or your heaviest burden. I will push you onward or drag you down to failure. I am completely at your command. Half the things you do, you might as well turn over to me, and I will be able to do them quickly and correctly. I'm easily managed. You must merely be firm with me. 
show me exactly how you want something to be done. And after a few lessons, I will do it automatically. I'm the servant of all great men and alas, of all failures as well. Those who are great, I have made great. I'm not a machine, but I work with the precision of a machine plus the intelligence of a man. You may run me for profit, you may run me for ruin. It makes no difference to me. Take me, train me, be firm with me, and I will put the world at your feet. Be easy with me, and I will destroy you. Who am I? Habit. I am habit. And habits, by and large, have got us to where we are in today. But it's also the habits that we haven't wanted to learn or that we ignore and that we don't apply properly that have potentially got us to not reach where we're at. So it's not only that you've got to have habits, you also have to have extraordinary habits. And that is critically important, is that you have extraordinary habits. So I want to just do an exercise with you at the moment. If, uh, and it's not one of these where you have to get up and talk to the person on the left or right of you, because clearly that's not possible. What I'd like you to do is just fold your arms, just fold your arms to start off with as you would normally. And then now on the count of three, I want you to fold your arms the other way. One, two, three. So which one was easier? You can put it into the chat. Unfortunately, I can't see the chat at this point. But normally it's number one that's easier because that is the habit that you are, that you, that you are used to. Getting to the other, the other way, to do it the other way, it's simple, but doing it the other way was actually, you have to give it some thought. And maybe now next time when you fold your arms, you're going to go, is this the way that I always do it? Or is this the way that I always do it? But that is what habit is. It's a bit difficult to get into other habits, but you have to foster these. And to remember this, I need you to think about this, write this out, print this out, and put it where you can see it. Have extraordinary habits. You have to have extraordinary habits as you move through the 90-day burn. Because if you don't master your habits, they'll master you. So it's really, really very important to, to do that and have these habits. So what is an extraordinary habit? I feel you need to draw up, you need to update, you need to maintain lists, to-do lists. And they're very, very, very important. You know, a lot of people go, well, I don't need lists. Yeah, maybe you don't, but potentially you do. Most people don't make lists. Um, but they once you put something down onto the list, you don't have to remember it anymore. Because what happens is people don't work with lists, and then they decide they'll be able to remember what to do tomorrow. But you don't, you forget these things. You forget it the following day and then, and so it disappears until someone says, did you do this? So I did a course with a guy called Dr. Ron Friedman and he talks about doing eight hours work in less than half the day. And in fact, in something like two to three hours. And the bedrock or foundation to this is lists. And he says, anything that he talks about or that he puts into his programs is all researched and deeply researched. That is what he actually did as a work. And, um, and he says, lists are critical to this because you put these things onto a list and then you can tick them off as you go along and you know what you've got to do. And it's very, very important when you've got a list. Um, well, it's not important, but, it, but it's important for you and your brain because as you tick something off, you're telling your brain that you have done something. And when you look at this list at the end of the day and you tick off there that the, and you're looking at everything that is ticked off, you are looking at achievement of what you've done. Plus, you know what you still have to do for tomorrow's list. And he says, also, do not put this onto your phone. Do not put this onto your computer because it's always going to be behind another app. It's not always going to be visible. You need to have a physical list. And more importantly, you need to have a list that is um, the document that you put it on, preferably another color, so that it stands out. So that is critically important. Lists are important, whether it's for goals or for your daily, daily uh, uh, of what you need to do, but lists for your daily, daily projects, daily work that you need to do, certainly critical important. So I'm sure you've had a, a moment to read through that, and that is 
I the root of our problems and our bad habits. I need you to forget the words I can't because these are the words of a loser. Remember the words I'll try. Why? Because these are the words of a potential winner. And then respect and imitate the words I will because these are the words of a winner. So don't go, I can't. Think of, I will. And that's critically important because remember this, you are wanting to foster extraordinary habits. And what I need to say at this point is that you have to avoid CPAs. I'll get to that in a moment as to what they are. Now you also have to have clearly the right attitude. And there's people that are gonna to say to you, uh, all that you need is the right attitude or attitude is everything. I'm here today to tell you that attitude isn't everything, but it is the one thing that makes and can make a difference. Attitude cannot make up for experience. Attitude cannot make up for, for, for uh, um, aptitude. And if I want to fly somewhere, I don't want someone who's just got the right attitude. I need a pilot, first of all, because the attitude is not going to get me there. The experience is, is cannot, you know, attitude cannot make up for the experience in that, in that field. And it's easier to maintain a right attitude as opposed to regaining it. I have a problem with my attitude. Not that I don't start out every day with a great attitude, because I do. And I'm always wonder about people that don't have a great attitude in the morning because they're not morning people. But I have a great attitude. And when we used to drive around a lot more in the mornings and get into traffic or then rush our traffic, you know, I'd go block one is fine, block two is, you know, block three, it's okay, I'm still good. And then as you go further and further, people cut in front of you or you're standing at the light, you're waiting to turn left or you're waiting to turn right, someone ahead of you doesn't go at when they should go. My attitude just goes. And, and in traffic like we have, yeah, and I'm sure the traffic that you have in your areas as well, it doesn't bode and sit well with me. And then I hoot at the person in front of me and then, you know, then, then they look at me and they don't even know me and they're showing me I'm number one. Now, they don't know me and I sometimes want to show them, listen, I think you too, that you're number one, but okay, I don't. But then I've got to regain that attitude. So it's easier to maintain the right attitude. And one of those ways is by avoiding CPAs. So what are CPAs? CPAs are, well, when I first got introduced to this, I also didn't know what it was. My daughter was new at her school and the, the, we went to a gathering and there was a new principal that had started there as well. And after some formalities, he got introduced to the crowd and then he said to them, his opening line, not to them, to us was, ladies and gentlemen, I do not want CPAs in my school. And CPAs simply are car park assassins. What are car park assassins? Car park assassins, he said, are these people that come to school in the mornings, they drop their kids off, and then they gather in the parking lot, and then they start talking about things that happen at school. And this carries on in the next day. This story has got a little bit bigger and processes work up around these people until this problem is huge. And then it eventually ends up with a principal or in the principal's office. And it's nothing like that at all, but they've built in misery into the story of theirs. And it could have been flamed. Uh, the flame could have been put out long before it even started. So avoid CPAs, and you know who these CPAs are. A lot of times they'll say things like, you might say, uh, I want to open up a new restaurant and we're only going to serve mussels. And they'll go, who wants to do that? Why would you want to do that? I mean, who goes out and eats mussels? You know, and that, it's negative. And they, you know, and you think about, do you know CPAs? People start off like this in the mornings when you say to them sometimes, and this is not necessarily a CPA, good morning, how are you doing? And they go, well, not too bad. So it's going bad. And when you ask them, oh, wow, well, what's wrong? They say nothing. You said, but you said it's going bad. He said, well, no, it's not actually. You know, some, some of that is even built into us. So we need to think about things like that when we 
even talk about it. Maintain the right attitude on a constant basis. It's critically important that we do that. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna cover off two laws. And what you gotta know about the laws is that um, if you break a law, there's a consequence to that. If you go over the speed limit and the cops catch you, there's a consequence to that, be it a fine or a prison sentence. And it's probably not a prison sentence, but normally there is a consequence if you break a law. So just some questions as we go through this. You know, what have you potentially read lately in terms of sales or in terms of customer service? Because effectively, if you're in business, you're in sales, period, everybody. You're into this customer service or on attitude or on self-development. What are you potentially currently reading? These are the kind of things by doing these that will keep you in the right attitude. It'll keep you focused as we go through the 90 day burn. And you don't want the negatives to come in and reading and following the program maybe on YouTube. Just don't be like me when you go to YouTube, you eventually end up watching rock videos. But the more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. So reading is critically important. And reading also while you're doing it, there's no negatives can, that can come in because reading is a very complex thing that the mind goes through and it's very focused. So I do recommend if you aren't, so certainly consider that. So, <clears throat> and again, I need you to unforget this, avoid CPAs. And so we get to the first law, which is the law of the shareholder. So what do shareholders do? Shareholders buy stock. And what do they look for? They look for an attractive stock. Are you an attractive stock? Are you a well-read stock? Are you a stock that has built-in potential into yourself? And if you were a stock and you were a shareholder and you want to be a shareholder, would you buy stock in yourself? It's very, very important because as a shareholder, you want maximum return on investment. And you want maximum return on investment in terms of yourself as a shareholder in yourself. So then you need to ask yourself this important question. So to come up there. Am I a salesperson in business? Okay, or you can put there if you're a PA or if you're a call center agent, am I a call center agent in business? But let's just work with a salesperson. Am I a salesperson in business or am I in the business as an owner making sales? So how you answer this question is very, very important. The first part of the question is employee thinking. The second is CEO thinking, that shareholder thinking. And that's very, very important. You need to think of this as a shareholder, as, a, as an owner. So by example, I told the story to a friend of mine once, and he now had his own business. And it's about a bunch of sales guys that go out to lunch on a Friday afternoon and come around about 2.33, they finish, they've paid the bill, they've had a couple of drinks. And then one of them says, should we have one more for the road before we go back to the office? And the other guy said, well, it all depends. He said, what do you mean it depends? Well, it all depends on whether you just work here or whether you see yourself as an owner. And isn't that just it? And when I told this to my friend, Rob, he said, that was exactly it. When he was an auditor, they would go to company and audit it. They'd go out to lunch, and then sometimes they wouldn't go back on that Friday afternoon because they can do it the next day. But now that he owned his own business, it's Friday. He doesn't go to lunch. He sometimes takes people out and meets up with clients because he has to. But he makes that very short because he has to get back to the business because that's his business. He's the owner, and he manages that so that he can maximize the return on the time that he puts in. The law of the shareholder, when you break this, there are consequences. So always think of yourself as the CEO. And sometimes it's very difficult to get into that. And then you need to maintain focus. Habits are good. Having a good attitude is brilliant, but you need to focus. And it gets difficult because you're now wanting to put something new in place. 
and then your focus can wane, but you need to follow one course until successful. Because the minute you decide to do something, what happens is your dog gets eczema and you have to take it to the vet twice a week. Your client uh, uh, lets you down, cancels an order. You, you, um, your, your supplier lets you down on something. And all these things start coming in. And you could lose focus on this. So you need to maintain focus. And how can you do that? So just like we get dressed up on the outside when we go out, so too you need to get dressed up on the inside. That is critically important. It's very, very important. Where and how do the problems start with us? With most people, they listen to themselves too much and they don't talk to themselves. What do I mean? When you wake up in the mornings, the minute you're awake, thoughts start streaming into your mind. They come, they keep on coming. You didn't invite them, you didn't want them, you didn't solicit them, but they come and they keep on coming. And they could be negative. They are just thoughts. And you know this, you've experienced this, everybody's experienced this. And people listen to their thoughts and what they should do is they should be talking to themselves more than listening to themselves. And for that, you need positive and a positive environment and affirmations. And this is how you use an affirmation as well, because positive thought processes are critically important. And that's when I, my example that I used early on, where I said, you know, you ask people, how are they? And they go, not too bad. They need, you need to be more positive about your day. You know, it's going well. Thank you very much. Very well. Thank you. So this is how you use affirmations. It's positive language. You need to print it out. When you look at statements that are made, they are always printed out and put up into places. Look in the mirror in the mornings, read it out 10 times, repeat this and look at it right throughout the day. And then end your day by looking in the mirror again and reading it out 10 times. You can use positive statements. And a lot of times people feel, you know, this is like really, you know, it's a little bit hoo-hoo, but it's very, very important. There's people that offer courses for four weeks, for five weeks, just to get people to have a positive mindset every day and what they need to do to get there. And this will assist you in having a positive mindset on a constant basis. Make this one of your habits every single day. And if you're not too happy about an affirmation as such, I suggest that you look at a daily attitude or at least a positive statement and or quote. So I have just some a few affirmations here for you that you can have a look at and that we can just run through. I attract positive and successful people to me. As in, in, in life and in sales or in business, these are the kind of people you'd want around you anyway. Now, a lot of times people would go, you know, I always end up with a loser. I always end up with an alcoholic. I always end up with a person that is such. And as long as you speak that, you will continue to end up with people like that. You need to change that mindset. And I've met people that have done that. Um, it's only because they change their entire mindset. Inhale the future, exhale the past. Or I inhale positives, I exhale negatives. It's very important that you think about these kind of things. I'm stronger, wiser, and more confident with each new day. I only attract healthy and loving relationships. I mean, that's obviously what people would want. But, you know, they've already stated, as I've just get you, given you an indication, that they end up with people in their lives that are not anywhere close to this. So start by programming your mind correctly. It's not their job to like me, it's mine. Then for someone who's losing weight, certainly these things are very important. I look forward to achieving my ideal weight because then I will wear whatever it is you all wanna wear, wanna wear and enjoy, critically important. Now, here's just a, a daily gratitude that you can have is I am grateful for the people that I help today, or I'm grateful that I was able to help people today. 
and that's quite a critical one there. So you need to get dressed up on the on the outside as you do, but remember that getting dressed up on the inside is very important. And then you have to show up for your paycheck. Just having these positive attitudes and maintain, you know, having uh, the affirmations and getting into it, but you need to put yourself in the path of opportunity. So let's just look at uh, two more affirmations. The first one is, my affirmations work for me. Sounds, you know, like why would you want to do that? But put that into, into your positive talk. I'm grateful for my health and well-being. Um, it's, it's certainly a critical one, certainly in the time that our world is going through right now with COVID. Currently, I do, uh, every day, I do one, uh, I do a positive, uh, well, an affirmation on Instagram. That is my Instagram address. You can follow me there. And there are also, uh, it gets done in the stories. So it's always there. But there's also in the archives, there's a bunch of them there that you can use. So feel free. Uh, and that is my, my Instagram handle. So just take a moment to look at this here. <clears throat> so you need to watch your thoughts. It's critically important that you need to watch your thoughts because what you think you become, or as they say, you know, the word becomes flesh, as it were. But really, think in the right way and things certainly have a better chance of going in, in the right way as well. And so we get to our second law, the last law for today, and that is the law of the ladder. And that simply is grow your business daily, little by little. Far too much is put into the moment and not enough is invested in the process. Far too much is put into the moment with a New Year's resolution. But come 5.30 the next day, people are already back into their old habits because far too much was put into the moment and they weren't willing to invest in the process. So whatever this is that you're wanting to change, invest in the process, let it move forward and just start with the small steps and then continue with them. And that's the law of the ladder. Don't a lot of times people will want to, you know, have far too lofty goals of what they want to achieve. And, and it's virtually impossible, even for the achievers. They want to overachieve and then they fall back and they go, what's the use in this? It's really, you know, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. So, you know, you don't become great in a day. You become great daily. I think that's very, very important to remember. So let's recap on what we need here. We need to have extraordinary habits. And during that whole process, and as you move throughout the 90 day burn, you need to avoid CPAs. Have a great attitude, but know this, that it isn't everything, but it certainly is the one thing, the one thing that can and will make a difference. Positive talk and um, positive influences are very, very important. Remember to have CEO thinking throughout this whole process that you put this in. And then we haven't spoken about it, but here's another TLA for daily deliberate action. You need to do these daily deliberate actions. Now, you know what they are, but if you've put yourself into a path where you know you now were making three calls a day to prospects and you've now set yourself a goal to make two, make those two. Don't leave them for tomorrow to do four or leave them for the following day to do six because how much more difficult can it be? Make the two today. These small steps, daily deliberate actions so that you can get to where you want to get to by doing the actions that are required. That is critically important. And then the law of the ladder. So what is the 90 day burn then? This is what you need to complete these. So whatever it is that you're going to be doing, the 90 day burn, 
It's broken up like this. So what I say is for 28 days, do the do what you need to do and do what you want change. Because it takes 28 days to get into a habit. And then at the end of those 28 days, make it another two days, then we are at a month. At the end of those 28 days, do it for another 28 days. So you've now done two sessions of 28 days. And think about it like this. If you're trying to lose weight, you're not going to lose weight overnight. It's going to take a while. So you might have to do 28, you might have to do another 28 days. But not just with weight loss, with whatever it is that you're going to do. So now you've completed two sets of 28 days. When you get to the end of the second set, do another 28 days at least. Don't stop doing it. Just do your affirmations. Do the positive talk. You might feel uncomfortable with it. You should feel uncomfortable with it. We saw this when we folded our arms. It's just go with it. You have now done 90 days, the 90-day burn. So use the 28-90 principle. It takes 28 days to get into a habit, 90 days to create a lifestyle. So people might go, but is this a long time to do this? Well, is it? You know, you most probably at this point have spoken to people, and if you haven't, you might do it any day now, and then they'll go, how did we get, it's May already, five months, just the other day it was January, and that's far more than the 90 days, but look how quickly that went. It went very, very quickly. So the 90-day burn, it's, it's not that long. While you're going through this, I do believe while you're going through the changes, it's going to feel like forever. And while you're doing it, it's going to feel as though nothing, and it's going, going to look as though nothing is changing. That's while you're in it. But when you get to the end of 90 days and you look back over time, everything will have changed in some way or another. Maybe you didn't get to exactly everything you wanted, but there will be change. There will be a positive effect in your life. I guarantee you that. So those are the tools that I've mentioned and the thought processes that you've got to go to. But I also have uh, three other recommendations that you should do. And it's, these are the two books that I recommend, Atomic Habits. Uh, that was on the bestseller list. Um, Quite a while back uh, as the bestseller on Amazon, and um, it's still listed there as a as a bestseller. <clears throat> How to talk to anyone? Another book. I think that's brilliant. Certainly in terms of you being a CEO of your own business, of what you do, and then an audio program: Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Everybody's heard of the Stephen Covey book, but this is an audio program that I recommend you get. Um, I see. It is potentially free with some audible uh, trials that you can do on Amazon. What I do in South Africa with this and um, is I put together with a vendor, yeah, I put together a deal on this, which is not available to everybody except for people, yeah, but unfortunately they don't ship um, outside of South Africa. So unfortunately, no good price in terms of that. Now I try to get hold of Amazon by uh, looking for an email contact or a contact form on their website and I could not find one anywhere. So I couldn't put together a package like that for you. And in fact, in my customer, in most of my customer workshops, uh, customer service workshops, I tell people, just make it easy for people to contact you, be it your clients, be it your prospects. Now I know they have an app and you can phone them via that, but I'm not, a, I'm not you know, in any way those people wouldn't be able to assist me if, if I had an app, which I don't. So if anybody does know who I can contact at Amazon, that'll be great because then for potential other workshops, I can put together a deal or at least discuss it with them, but maybe I can get to do a workshop with them about customer service and getting people to um, make it easy for me to contact them. So please take a screen grab of that because um, you know, I haven't got, a, got a, an actual link that I could give you where you can purchase these so that you do have them and if you do want it to. An audio program, brilliant. The University of the Car, and instead of listening to um, uh, what do you call it, a talk show on the radio, when potentially you know the person that you're listening to who's phoning in 
is uh, sitting at home with a coffee-stained vest giving you their opinions about the world, rather have some positive elements in the university of the car. And that is a 90-day <coughs> plan. My name is Andre Kruser. I help ind the individuals in sales and customer service to set them apart from the rest so that they clients will come back to them every time, including the next time. Thank you very much. Wonderful, Andre. That's really wonderful. I'm, I'm sitting here. You probably can't see. I've got my pad and I've been uh, making notes. Uh, the things that I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Before I do that, everyone, thank you for listening in. If you have a question, please type it in the chat box, uh, not the Q&A. Please type it in the chat box and then I will read that out to Andre um, and, and, and he will be delighted to, to answer those. So please, any questions in the chat box. Andre, that was wonderful. Um, I, I, I filled the whole page here. Uh, the, the key points in the alpha group, we have an expression. We talk about our aha moments, you know, when you have an aha moment. And I love the bit about um, the, the ladder. The ladder was, was I just love that. And, the graphic you showed, the big steps, the little steps, brought it home. Um, and the, you use an expression, great in a day. So you can't be great in a day, but you can be great daily. And that yeah. really sunk home to me. Um, it resonated. So well done. Now, Emma has typed a question and she says, let me read this out. Kindly explain a little bit more about putting more in the, and then in capitals, in the process. Putting more in the process. I'm not sure what she means by that. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, when I say the process, this is the process of the 90 day burn. So, uh, and I, you know, if I'm interpreting that correctly, uh, I would say, you know, invest in this process of 90 days. Uh, you know, don't don't start it and stop. Use those 28 days if, if, if that is what, what this means. So invest in this process going forward of the 90 day burn. Mm. Um, it's not that long, but it's going to feel long, but invest in it. So, you know, that's all I can say to that. And well, that's how I understand it. But, uh, you know, if, if you wanted to maybe give us a, cl a clarification, I, I can try more then. And we've had a lot of people type in, um, I love this, uh, definitely will remember CPA, others, excellent presentation, well done, uh, have noted the book titles, thank you, uh, great talk, love the tips, great presentation, congrats, so the lots and lots like that, um, so well done, um, love that you don't become great in a day, yeah, uh, great. And then Colette has said, I have many lists, exclamation mark but never seem to do any, everything, everything listed. Any suggestions, please? Um, yeah, uh, th that, that should be normal for someone who is most probably either an entrepreneur or doing their work uh, correctly. Uh, it's difficult to get to everything, but it, it goes about uh, priorities, you know, to work out what's important and what's critical that needs to get done. Um, I would say if you've got many lists, try and get them onto one list. Uh, and once you've got them onto one list, I, I, I don't personally do this, but it would help, and I have done this in the past, is to look at these things and decide which ones are the important ones for tomorrow. Because I, you know, I do need to go and buy food, and it's on my list. Um, or as we say during COVID, I have to do a supply run. But I don't have to do it tomorrow. I could potentially do it the following day. Uh, so, you know, so those are priorities and there's most probably other ones that are more important. And then you might still not get to the ones at the bottom, carry them over to, to, to another day. Uh, see if you can get someone to assist you in some of these, because, you know, if, if, if you have that, get yourself a virtual assistant if need be, uh, if you can't have an assistant that helps you constantly. Um, you know, I've used them once or twice, but otherwise I kind of do, do my own. But I, I don't get to the end of my day or even at the end of the week and I still run over. 
I think, I think that happens to everybody. You know, even the goals that you set, you have many goals and you're going after them because you've written them down, but uh, you don't get to all of them. So it, it, it is difficult, but at least you've got it on a list. It's not just in your mind and then somewhere in the ether of your mind, it's written down. And if you can see it, potentially you will have a better chance of actually doing it. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today, Andre. We really appreciate it. And all those of you who attended, again, I thank you for your most precious gift, your time. We appreciate that so very much. This, will, this recording will appear on the Alpha Group website within the next two days uh, under Foresight Lectures. And we would love it if you could uh, let people know. Drive as much traffic as you can. We are here to help people free of charge to help them to build, to grow, to expand, to create, and to develop. So thank you all so much. Uh, look forward to seeing you all over the days, weeks, and months to come.